Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to hook up this to this. When I first got my boat, I'd never pulled a trailer before, so I didn't know anything about what I needed to get to be able to hook up to my boat. So one of the things that's important, obviously, is to have a hitch receiver on your vehicle, hook up for, for wires. But then also you need to make sure you have the right drop and the right size ball and receiver to be able to match that up. The hitch balls come in a couple of different standard size. They're like inch and seven eighths, two and I think two and a quarter. Um, they actually make these uh, hitches, these, re these, these balls where you could get one where it has like four different sizes on them. And that's kind of cool because that way you can for do hook up to a variety of trailers. One of the important things to know is that you need to match this up. And every trailer will say on here what size receiver it has. And this one it's written on here that it's a two inch receiver. So therefore you need to have a two inch ball to match up with a two inch receiver. When I bought mine, I guessed at the drop. I wanted to have a little bit of a drop because my truck sat a little bit high. For my purposes, it works just fine. So let's talk a little bit about this mechanism right here. This holds a tab that, when it's down, keeps the ball from going all the way up in there. This is a locking pin. So when you take the locking pin out, this goes up. When this goes up, it releases the tab, and then the ball can go all the way up into the receiver. Then, put this down, and that locks the ball onto the receiver. That's not coming off. In order to keep this from bouncing upward, you put the locking pin in here. When you have this locking pin, in the latch, the latch can't release. The latch has a tab that holds the correct size ball into the correct size receiver, keeping that very secure. When you get to your destination, you remove the latching pin, release this, and then you can crank this up to release it from the ball. That's the basics of it. Let's talk about how it connects to the back of your vehicle. So, you have your connection right here. You have that secured. And then you have these safety chains. The safety chains are very, very important. And they latch on to your uh, back of your vehicle. And what most people do, the rule of thumb is, is to cross the safety chains like that. If this, for any reason, breaks, comes undone, which can happen, these should keep your trailer from just completely going anywhere. It will just drop down and should drag and be held on with the chains. This wiring harness right here connects to your trailer lights. Mine's full of water. Let's talk about the back of the vehicle. Common electrical connectors on a vehicle are your common four pin connector right here. It has one that pushes on and then three receivers. And then also this round style connector right here. My particular setup has options for both. Some vehicles only have this and some only have that. See what your trailer has. If your vehicle only has this, there is an adapter that you can get to connect this to a four pin style. Sometimes this four pin connector is wired up and tucked up underneath of the bumper. And so you can reach around up underneath of the bumper and you can find this thing under there if there's a receiver installed on your vehicle. This hole here is where your chains hook onto whenever you're chaining it up. Something that can be challenging in this process is getting your vehicle backed up to where the ball lines up underneath of here. If you have a backup camera or some kind of aftermarket backup camera rigged up, much easier to be able to line the ball up underneath of here. Otherwise, you need an assistant to be able to help direct you to do that, which can be challenging because sometimes their directions are hard to interpret. Or you need to get in and out of your vehicle 14 times to get your ball lined up underneath of the receiver. 
I don't have a backup camera and I don't have an assistant today. So we're just going to uh, back up five or six times to try to get this right. But I'll fast forward this part for you. Oh, so close. So close. So sometimes what you can do is you can pull your trailer in a little bit to get it to line up. Because once you put it in park, if you don't set your parking brake, sometimes they'll nudge forward just a smidge. Okay, so as you can see, we're not perfectly lined up here. If we're not perfectly lined up, the tab that's on the inside of this will actually catch on the ball. So we're gonna need to, as we're putting it down, we're gonna need to wiggle this back a little bit. Also, you'll want to adjust up and down your height of your trailer as you're doing this to make sure you've got it where the ball can clear the receiver. I had mine set high enough. And now we're going back up again. <laughs> so you could hear that. That was the piece, the latching piece, bumping on the ball, doing what it's not supposed to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the truck forward just a, just a tad. By moving the truck forward just a tad, it should drop correctly onto this ball now. And it is. See how the receiver went all the way down on there? And this didn't catch. So now I can latch it and I can feel underneath here that it has a hold of that. Put our locking pin in. And now, just to test it, what I can do is I can crank up on this. And as you can see, this all is moving as a unit. It's actually lifting up the back end of my truck. And now we hook up our chains. So we're going to cross our chains. And then we plug in our electric connector. And we have our safety pin in here. So we have our chains crossed hooked on and our electrical connected. So now we raise up our wheel. And this also has a mechanism to be able to tilt. So I can rotate my wheel all the way up. my board. Next we remove our wheel chocks. Make sure our engine is latched in the upright position. You don't want your engine flopping down. Get our other wheel chocks from the other side. Then we test our lights. So I checked my trailer lights and a bunch of them aren't working properly. However, if you've seen any other videos about my trailer, I live literally a block from the marina. If you're going out on the road, obviously you wanna have all your trailer lights working properly. You don't wanna endanger other people or get an unnecessary ticket or possibly cause an accident or have any other kind of failures out there on the road. I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, if you did like this video, please like, comment, subscribe below. And I'd love to hear your feedback and your thoughts. Obviously, there's a lot of variables with connecting a trailer. This video just covered the very basics of how you connect a trailer. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.